What's going on everyone? I've been in tech as an engineer for almost a decade now. And looking back, there are some things that I wish I would have known that would have definitely helped me get to where I am and maybe even further. So in today's video, I wanna talk about those five things. So like I said, I've been writing code. I've been in an industry for almost 10 years now, even though it feels like forever that I've been doing this and I'm still having fun. I'm still learning. I still have so many things to look forward to and I cannot wait to see where I'm gonna be another 10 years from now. This has definitely been the best decision that I've ever made in my life and it's been incredibly rewarding and I am super thankful and appreciative of everyone that's been in my network to help me get here. Now, if I would have had some of the knowledge that I have now, so many things would have been easier. I would have made less mistakes and who knows where I would have been. So if you're new to learning the code, if you're new to engineering and you're just breaking in, here are some tips that I hope will be helpful for you because I wish I would have had them. So tip number one, you have to be okay with feeling stupid. That is the best way that I can say it. So a lot of people, when they approach learning to code, they think of it like, like when they were in school, right? You do some studying, you get a lecture, you read some books, you do some homework assignments, you take a couple quizzes, then there's a test, and then eventually you'll see it again in like a midterm or a final exam or something like that. And eventually when you pass the test and the quizzes, that gives you the validation that you know this and you just know that for the rest of your life. Learning to code is not like that at all. And if you take that approach, I think it could be hurtful to your confidence and to your morale because I've seen a lot of people come from an educational background, PhDs, people with bachelor's degrees and master's degrees, and they try to take that approach and I'm not saying it doesn't work for them. The thing I see that gets in their way the most is the fact that they're just not okay with feeling stupid because I don't care who you are. If you go try to learn to code right now, it's gonna be incredibly difficult because it just requires a different way of thinking. And you just really have to be okay with not knowing what's going on. And you have to be comfortable being productive without actually understanding everything that's going on. What I like to tell people is an engineer is someone that doesn't know a lot of things, but can pretty much figure everything out. With your research, with your resources, you can come to some conclusion, you can come to some end result without fully understanding all the things involved. So be okay with feeling stupid because that feeling is never gonna go away, uh, but you will get better. Tip number two, you have to put in a lot of time up front. So learn to code is not one of those things where you can do part time. There has to be a lot of time up front, multiple hours, 30 hours, 40 hours condensed into a short amount of time to where you can just get past that huge initial hurdle of learning the basics. Because if you don't, what ends up happening is every time you come back to revisit where you left off, you're just trying to remember what you did last time. And I've seen that so many times. I've mentored so many people that I just lost contact with. They ghosted me basically because they would only spend two or three hours a day, maybe even less. And that was their plan. And they could never get forward. They could never make progress past the things that they started off with. That's because you really need that big investment up front because this is your first time learning to code. This is your first time learning a specific language. There's just so many first times when you're breaking into, you know, being an engineer that a big investment up front is going to be helpful. That's what I did. And that was helpful for me uh, was when I finally took that approach and I squeezed in like 40 hours of learning in like less than the week. I felt like after that week, I knew so much more than I knew uh, going into it where I was doing this like two or three hours a day. Tip number three is to build something. If you really want to learn, I think the best way to do it is to have a goal of building something. Otherwise, you're just learning to learn. And because there's basically an infinite amount of knowledge out there of what you can be learning, how do you know when you learned enough? How do you know when you're ready? How do you know when you're done? You don't, you really don't. So if you have a goal of building something, at least you can point to what the end result is gonna be. At least you know when you're done. And believe it or not, having that goal is gonna help you progress faster. Let me walk you through it. So if your goal is to rebuild Twitter from scratch, even though you might think right now you have no idea how to do that, that's okay, that's the point. Most of the stuff you're gonna get as an engineer is gonna be things you don't know how to do, so you should be okay with that eventually. But because you do have a goal, now you can ask questions. And those questions are gonna be very broad at first. So you might literally type in Google right now, how to rebuild Twitter from scratch using this technology. And you're probably not gonna find a lot of detailed answers but you might find something just enough to get started. And once you get started, you're gonna run into another problem. And guess what? You're gonna look up that problem. You're gonna ask Google, you're gonna ask a mentor, you're gonna ask someone that's been doing this for a while, and you're gonna get better at asking good questions, which are gonna give you good answers. And eventually, if you repeat that process, you're gonna have some type of end result. It might not be pretty, 
you definitely won't understand everything that went into it, even though you did it. But what you would have done is gotten really good at researching, which is critical as an engineer and just being resourceful. And in my opinion, is the most productive way at, at doing your job. And then you can go back and try to understand things later if you want to further your knowledge. Get good at that. Uh, have a goal and move towards that goal versus trying to say, I'm going to learn everything ever and then I'll try to get a job. Tip number four is try to think like a computer or computational thinking. I think everyone has their own example of this. You can Google it. There's many talks about thinking like a computer. In my mind, what that really means is trying to understand how a computer is gonna process certain information, certain lines of code, and align your thinking with that. Because if you can predict what the computer is gonna do, it's gonna make you a lot more productive, a lot more faster. And when it comes to debugging, you're gonna be a lot quicker because you can understand what the computer is doing. By doing that, I was able to move through those problems a lot faster versus when I was trying to think about it from my own perspective. Like, okay, how is the computer processing this entire function? Like, okay, computers don't think that way, but we do as humans. Like when we see a table, we see a table, but when a computer sees a table, it doesn't see a table. It breaks it down to smaller bits and it kind of just combines them at the end without even knowing that there's a full thing at the end, right? They're still just small little bits. And at the end of the day, when you get a job, you're just going to get measured on your productivity. So the more productive you can be, the better your chances are getting promotions and making more money. So focus on productivity is definitely the key you want to do there. But good luck trying to undo that when you're talking to people in your life and not talking to them like they're computer programs. And the last tip that I wanted to talk about is communication. It's such a big issue when it comes to learning the code that I think if you don't have good communication early on, it's just going to be impossible for you. And it doesn't really matter what approach you take, whether you went to a four year degree program or you did a boot camp or you're doing self learning online. If you don't have effective communication about everything that you're doing with whomever is helping you, it's probably not going to work out for you. So let me explain. I've mentored a lot of folks that were learning the code and I would have to go out of my way to ping them and ask them, hey, how's it going? What are you stuck on? Can I be helpful? And if they got back to me, it was always very short answers like, oh yeah, I'm good or, or I'm stuck without telling me what they're stuck on and different things like that. The communication was lacking versus an example of good communication is someone that's constantly reaching out to me to the point where I'm literally annoyed that they won't leave me alone, but they always have really good things to say. They always know exactly what they're trying to do and they're always reaching out and they're trying to be effective and they're getting better they're just focusing on that communication because without that it's just not going to be good for you especially when you get a job and you're working on a team of other engineers and designers and product managers if your communication is lackluster especially with everything being remote now you're not going to succeed i don't care how good of an engineer you are i don't care how technical you are if you cannot communicate effectively your chances of succeeding as an engineer are going to be pretty slim what i like to do is just over communicate what does that actually mean well I like to talk about the things that I'm working on, the things I think I might be stuck on, the things I'm actually stuck on. I just like to over communicate all of those things, especially in a remote world, to the point that you're going to be annoyed with me and you're going to tell me to stop talking to you because I won't shut up. That's just me. I'd rather be over communicative versus not communicating at all or just not communicative effectively. So working on that communication, you know, learning those terms, uh, just putting yourself out there and not being afraid to talk to individuals, especially about things you're stuck on, things you're worried about things you need help with, you really have to be able to do that. So if you want a job, get better at communicating. So those are the tips that I wanted to talk about. Uh, you might've heard some of them before. Some of them even sound very generic, but I just wanted to emphasize them a lot more to let you know that I think that these things are very important. And even just outside of learning the code, a lot of this stuff actually applies. So if you found this video helpful in any way, please leave a like, subscribe. It's gonna help show this video to anyone else out there who might benefit from this, because at the end of the day, I just want as many people possible to see this because I passionately want more people to get high paying jobs in tech because it's been so life changing for me. And I always have people come up to me in real life about how I was able to do it. So this is why I make it this channel. So please help me out by leaving that like or subscribe. And then you can sign up for notifications if you wanna hear about any other videos that I'm gonna be doing. Got some really cool stuff in the works. Uh, cannot wait to show y'all, so stay tuned. Until next time, peace.